I did the intro for you. Hi guys, uh, welcome to the Monkey Scrolls podcast. Uh, this week on the podcast, we're doing Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from 1994. My name's Caleb. I'm Joseph. And I am Kiefer. And uh, yeah, we watched Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from 1994. Uh, this was a movie that I remembered liking from high school. Everyone else in the world remembered hating. And I think everyone in general just hates. But a little synopsis of it. It's an adaption of the uh, book from Mary Shelley from back way when whence it came. Uh, it uh, is touted on Wikipedia as the most faithful film adaptation of the movie, of the book, I mean. And um, I think it's tight. I mean, basically, a scientist guy decides he's tired of people he likes dying. So he cuts up a bunch of bodies, electrocutes them, comes back to life. And what do you know? It's Robert De Niro. <laughs> and he's pissed about being alive. So he takes it back out on the scientist. That's all you got to know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the story of Frankenstein is uh, pretty universally known. Uh, yeah. So if you don't know the story of Frankenstein already, you've got other issues, maybe? Like, I don't know. You might actually live in a cave and not have any technology until you found this podcast somehow. <laughs> yeah. It's been done and redone a bazillion times. Yeah, since yeah. like 1823. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, this is right here. 1818 is when it came out, uh, the book. So, you know, it's been done over a billion times. Uh, the book, I think it's cool. The story of it is some girl was sitting around with her friends and was like, I bet I could scare you more. You could scare me. And she did. Mary she, yeah, I certainly did myself a disservice by not reading the book before watching this. I think I'm going to read. I think I want to read the books. I never have. I need to because there's definitely parts of this movie that took place. <laughs> It, you said it's the most faithful adaption of the book. There were parts that clearly had to have come from a deeper story that we just got a glance of that did not translate well to film, in my opinion. And we could touch on those later. Yeah. <laughs> or I mean, now, yeah. But the whole, yeah, the whole the whole point is don't play God, kids, because you don't know what the fuck's going to come back. Don't play like, God. And then incest is going to happen for some. Yeah. Reason. Well, no like, longer brother and sister dude, that that was hands down wife. the worst line in the whole thing <laughs> it, it was unexpected and out of nowhere and it also makes it like 20 times less sexy right it's like oh they're about to make out she's like you yeah, remember that time we grew up together because like, it could have been, been his girlfriend like, <laughs> they're yeah. not blood they're not I mean, yeah it's fine all right we've all been on the internet a little too long you know what's going on but i'm yeah. just saying uh, it's fucking, it's just inappropriate, man. Yeah. And this was like in 1994 before they had any excuses. <laughs> they could have written that shit out. They did not have the the sweeping uh, amount of step family porn that exists today. Oh, and... here here it is. Here it is. We're on Mary Shelley's Wikipedia right now. We're spilling her truth. All right. <laughs> Mary Shelley's mother died after giving birth to her. She was raised by her father. She was educated and rich. And she had her own. Oh, he is an anarchist. But I guess right here, here's the problem. You ready? Uh, they spent a summer over at Lo with Lord Byron and a bunch of rich people near Geneva, Switzerland, where she came up with the idea. She was probably in that house with a bunch of rich people. And they're like, oh, this guy's like, this guy's. Like, part of your family. We're all living together. And she's like, I'm trying to fuck that guy. <laughs> and that's where the psychology came out for that. I'm telling you. I'm going to read the book and see if there's incest in it. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure it would have been more fleshed out and part of the story. Whereas in the movie, I mean, it could have just been his girlfriend. But for no reason, there's a line of dialogue that says, we're also brother and sister, huh? Dude, it's just the like, worst what? Part is, <laughs> it's not even just like they're about to make out and she says now we're not brother and sister it, because that's already pretty fucking weird and bad yeah she says <laughs> she says no longer brother and sister and then goes like full on on him and earlier when he asked to marry her <laughs> he says he says to her are you my sister and she says yes kisses him sister 
kisses him. Friend kisses him. Lover. <laughs> <laughs> dude, they, they used to get down back at the turn of the 19th century. Dude, dude. You know, it was a fucking party back then. Dude, Everyone had collar and you know what the fuck was going to happen. Dude, that was the 1800s. Eight, well, 1800s, so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that was the most yeah. alarming part for me. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it was weird. Yeah. So just a side note uh, to summarize it a bit more before we go all the way into it. This movie oh, yeah. has the most fire cast in Frankenstein history. All right. We got Kenneth Branagh, who directed and played Victor Frankenstein. We got Robert De Niro, you know, doing his best character work since Taxi Driver <laughs> as Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> and we got Helena Bonham Carter playing the brother fucker. Yeah. John yeah. Cleese is in this, too. He plays the, yeah. uh, the professor that he first, like, starts getting into like bringing people back to life with and that's yeah. yep. cool because i love john cleese he's all if you great. really think about it john cleese played the frankenstein's monster because his brain was in the body yeah think uh, about that ian holm is frankenstein's yeah. dad ian holm is frankenstein's dad just ian holm you know casually it's like a solid cast but the whole thing i mean it, the whole thing seems like if you took a bunch of high school kids and made them overact and filmed it, like every single scene is, I'm going to act this at 150%. And it, it just loses all, I, I, like, anything. Like, I just, it, it kept me so, like, interested in why the fuck they made these acting choices. I just. It was the opposite of immersion. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. Everything <laughs> out. Suspension I was like, what? of disbelief. I was just gone because it, it felt like I was watching a movie. Like yeah. I've never well, been like. Well, oh. did you have you guys seen any of Kenneth Branagh's like Shakespeare movies? He did. He did, he adapted all the Shakespeare movies. This I mean, he, he turned this them all was another yeah. Shakespeare movie. Yeah, that's this how he was... did it. Yeah, he did it. He did it like a play instead of like trying to make it more believable. Because the Shakespeare movies are done pretty much the same way, but since it's Shakespeare and it's dramatic, it kind of works. But in yeah. this one, it's just a guy like his mom dies, and he's like, "It need not happen." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it need not happen. And he looks to the sky. I guess yeah, that's maybe it's just trying to be, uh, like how the time. I mean, you know, like a story of the times. I'm sure when they went and saw plays in the 1800s, this is how it was. You know, so mm -hmm. maybe he's really trying to harken back to that, but. It just it 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 doesn't work in a modern movie, and I mean, yeah, ninety four is uh, twenty six years ago, but that's modern enough where you don't have to have <laughs> them act like yeah, I'm I mean, sitting well, in I mean, the way back. I, I mean, here. I mean, we watched we watched two older movies, and that were both ten out of ten. But yeah. that's also John Carpenter, so it's not <laughs> you know it's a little special. But like, yeah, but um, I mean, honestly, uh. I think the best thing the movie did was it does flesh out why the monster's pissed off. Well, so it gives you a reason, but let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Because he starts off as a blank slate, almost nice guy. Yeah. He flips the switch quick. Yeah. Oh, like With, immediately. He, he's hiding out and kind of spying on a family which is how the movie explains how he learns how to read. He's spying on kids uh, getting taught to read by their mom. He's hiding in a pig pen after he breaks up with the doctor. And he then can read the <laughs> journal. He can read the journal now. And then he learns that he's a monster and he has somebody to hate. But... But the movie kind of sets him up as a good guy. He's nice. He's helping the farmers farm when they can't get through the frozen turf. He he's like a good person. And then it takes one misdoing, like where the family mistakes him for a bad person. And then he's just like, well, I'm going to get revenge on Frankenstein now. And he goes from like. It felt like they were trying to build him up as a lovable thing. And he immediately starts killing kids and stuff. 
Well, okay, so it's not it's not one step. <laughs> they they kick him, they kick him out, they kick him out, and he sees like his little flower, and he's like, "Uh, I could prove to them that I'm the spirit of the forest." And he goes back, and the family dipped. So it's like he has no one. Right. It just that's true, but I felt like it was super abrupt. Whereas maybe <laughs> if I was reading the book and they did that over the course of like a few chapters or pages. See, I need to read the book. Well, maybe yeah. because instead, I feel like of, the... instead of showing them going out to, because there's a scene I really want to talk about because I this movie is two hours long and wastes its time. Instead yes, of it wasting does. its time in a lot of spots, it could have filled in. You know, maybe instead of the where the creature escapes from town and he's attacked by the townspeople, he spends time like getting attacked by people when they see him in the woods originally. And then he goes to this family's house, and then like they like, what the fuck? You're a giant muscle man stitched together, so they get scared of him. And they like that, but this movie wastes so much time doing things that don't matter. Like w- the scene where uh, she finally co- coaxes him out of his lab for the first time, and they go out to fly kites, and which. <laughs> They do the circle. <laughs> they they go they do the circle and there's the, the, the lightning bolt or the, the fucking storm cloud. There's one storm cloud in this huge like it's this picturesque <laughs> Swiss landscape. It's blue, it's bright, and there's one storm cloud that's a white it's a white cloud with with bad looking electricity in it and they're freaking out all the girls are like oh my god we need to hide under a tree and you know what i'd be trying to hide from one storm cloud on a sunny day too because it was fucking insane and that's a that's a possessed storm cloud and then and then they lay down in a circle and he sets up like a little fucking like uh a lightning rod thing to, and it gives them all a static charge when a bolt hits it or something. I don't even know what that scene was because he doesn't ever like go back to this is how I'm going to power the monster because he ends up doing it with fucking electric eels and until later when he brings his wife back, then he uses well, electricity. But we got electricity is the energy of life, dude. I'm telling you, in Eastern medicine, they use pinpoints to electrocute the chakra. That's how they animate monkey hands, dumbass. Well, I feel like they were trying to do foreshadowing when it wasn't necessary. Yeah, yeah, they waste a lot of time. Like the movie feels like, like really drawn out parts that are like, okay, you focus on this for a long time, but then like all the plot parts are like snap, snap, snap. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, he's like, okay, listen, Frankenstein, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, I fucked up and I made you like this. And he's like, what can I do? And he's like, give me a woman. He's like, all right, I'll go get you. All right, if it'll make this right, dude, whatever's clever. So then he goes, and then Frankenstein goes and digs out his friend that got killed because of him, right? That girl, that blonde girl. He takes her back, and he's like, why her? Raw materials, nothing more. (laughs) He's like, okay, no problem. I can't make this bitch, though. That's my friend. And he's like, if you deny me my wedding night, I'll meet you on yours. Real quick, say... can we can we laugh at how much his accent breaks through at times? <laughs> There's sometimes where we're just like, that's Robert De Niro. Dude, your Robert De Niro impression from this movie is solid because that's exactly what he sounds like. <laughs> and by like every other account of how the creature sounds, he's like, yeah, he first starts out not knowing how to talk very good, but he's like Fuck. intelligent and knows how to talk in, in the book. Red. <laughs> he just sounds like he's a caveman the whole time. I, I, what was this movie, man? It was two hours long and it smelt <laughs> like fucking nine. <laughs> Robert De Niro is like my promises. He's just like he's trying not to be like I'm gonna put you in the back of the fucking car, man. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> shoot you in the fucking. Head. He's like trying not to become a fucking gangster the whole time. He's trying not to become a gangster, and it's super funny because he's sitting there as a monster, and he's like trying to tell him the implications of creating something without a soul. He's like, "What? I don't have a soul." And it's just like a few minutes ago you were talking like single syllable words, and now you're like a Bronx gangster almost. Just, just not so much like learned, but remembered. And you're like, "What?" 
<laughs> Remembered. Okay, um, can, can I can I can I bring up something that also doesn't make any damn sense to me? Absolutely. Okay, so we all know what happens. It's sad. He's like, I'll visit you on your wedding night. He pops out, rips out uh, Elizabeth's heart, and he says, I keep my promises. <laughs> and then he, then he's like, no! So then he's like, I could bring bitches back from there. I'll bring this bitch back with the other bitch's body, right? All right, let's, and then he brings her back. And then it's like, oh, it's the Bride of Frankenstein. There's that weird scene where they're dancing and he's like trying to remember, but her like head's about to fall halfway off. Even Linda was like, hold her head. Because he's like, <laughs> afraid her head was going to fall off. It looked like it was barely on there. No, so, hold up. But, yeah. Why would, did he shave her head? Why did he shave her head? And why was all... on her head? Her hair caught on fire. Dude, she died five minutes ago and he fucked her up. <laughs> like, she was... <laughs> like, she had a bunch of stupid, like. Yeah. What I want to know is why the hands got sewn on different. Her hands are sewn on different. She's got a stitched lip. Her eyes all jacked. Okay, well, here's the, here's the question. Maybe it's because, like, if he brought her back, he didn't want that other lady's hands to be touching on him. He's like, I want my wife's hands. Psychology. Dude. You guys got to think. You're not romantic. Like me. Why didn't he just put okay. other lady's heart in her? Because he knew how to bring. <laughs> dude, what was this movie? I don't know if Listen. that happens in the fucking right. book the same, but. But here's the part that gets me that I was alluding to. I just gave Sorry. the context for all of our many monkeys that are listening to this. All right, listen. <laughs> After that, he, Victor dances with the Bride of Frankenstein lady, Elizabeth. <laughs> and then she walks over to Frankenstein. She's like, maybe because we both look kind of weird. I'm down with you. But then he gets her to say Victor so she remembers. But she remembers while she's like, oh, I'm all fucked up. So she gets mad. And she yells at him with her hands for a little bit, which is pretty great. <laughs> and she just, like shakes her hands at him, like you made me like this. But she grabs this lamp and explodes it over her head, and she catches on fire. And that's fine. The part that fucked me up is she's running through this hallway, and there's fire explosions behind and in front of dude, her. That is running. the most flammable house in history, dude. Caught on fire say. before she got there. She's running, and you just see from in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> catches on fire before she gets there. And I was like, how? How did one lamp with oil that soaked onto her catch this whole house on fire that fast? And then Fire she, spreads, but not like that. She jumps off the ledge at the end, and then ex- there's like an explosion as she jumps. Yeah, just it's like <laughs> what the okay, fuck? That, that's how that's how one lamp works. <laughs> I'm sure every house in 1800 that dropped a lamp exploded to death. Dude, the most flammable house in the history of houses, Victor Frankenstein's mansion. I she just the second she passes by doors, the whole hallway is on fire. <laughs> and not only that, but like they chose to film it so it was framed as she's running cuz it's a guy in a flame suit. So as she's yeah, running right. towards the camera, instead of cutting off like the head so you don't see that it's a dude in a mask, it just you can just see the stunt man in a mask on fire in this dress, and I was like, "What happened? They just get yeah, tired." They, they took some uh, liberty with physics in this as well. I mean, I the mean, fire was, was just exploding. The electricity is just flowing between their fingers after it. It, it was all over the place. It's sci-fi. I do want to talk it, about a few things before they escape my mind, though. Okay, yeah, and right. it's because we're at the end of the movie. I want to go to the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Frankenstein's monster mauls and destroys eight dogs. <laughs> Why? <laughs> they came after him. Because <laughs> he was on his way to find Frankenstein, the doctor, to find out what his name was. He, and it's violent. He straight up just destroys dogs. He smashes fishes. those yeah. dogs against the rocks. It was insane. I mean, we watched the thing where dogs get split in half. This was almost worse because it's just a a pale green fist smashing dogs against the snow. I I, I don't know why that was so graphic. Why was that so? It could have been dogs running off into the mist and then yelping. But no, we get a close up. <laughs> like. We get a close-up violent mauling of these dogs. 
<clears throat> and then, uh, I mean, that that was just shocking. I wanted to bring that up. It was unnecessary, in my opinion. Um, But I also wanted to talk about, like, two things I enjoyed from the movie. And it's I don't think De Niro's makeup was bad. I actually liked it. I look good. I thought that he looked good. And also, the staircase in that house was beautiful. But no railing scared the hell out of me every time anyone walked up it, even for the actor safety. That's just you being (laughs) a father, I think. (laughs) It scared me for them. If I was in that movie, I would have been the best friend at the end, bro, or... Like he knows he has to try to stop him, but he's just halfway up the 69 steps and he's just like, no, <laughs> there's, there's no way I'm climbing that whole fucking staircase. bro. <laughs> when Ian Holm comes out from the, the delivery that kills his wife, he's or, up to his neck in blood, he's up to his neck in blood on these stairs. And I was just like, dude, get away fr- from the edge. <laughs> I was scared. Just imagine someone falling off the top of those stairs <laughs> off the side. <laughs> I mean, it was oh, it's a, it was a beautiful set if yeah. that wasn't an actual mansion because those stairs were were very cool. But yeah, I mean, that was 100% just just nightmare insane. fuel. I mean, you can have rails on staircases. <laughs> they sure <laughs> have. I th- did they remove those rails just to do that scene so you had a full view of the actor when he's on his knees covered in blood? It, it, it seems man. like something they would do just because of how heavily like it's based on a stage play it feels so much like a stage play it makes sense to remove things that would block the audience's view but it was a movie so they could have just moved the camera <laughs> they should have moved the camera a lot of times with <clears throat> kenneth Branagh doing a whole bunch of shakespeare stuff going into this it, it kind of makes sense why it came out the way it came out um a lot of people uh, from what I was reading reviews and stuff, feel like Kenneth Branagh kind of mishandled the whole thing. Yeah. And there's some directorial and editorial decisions that really indicate, I don't know who exactly was behind the wheel, but like, there's a little sus. And the big oh. one, yeah, the big one for me was not just the need for this scene, because it was almost completely unnecessary, but the editing on the scene where he's just like, rolling around with a naked Robert De Niro in fucking amniotic fluid. Dude, it was... Because it would cut from him, like, pushing him up, and then cut to him laying on him, and then cut to him, like, holding him from the back, and then cut to, like, Robert De Niro's ass. And then it would cut to, like, him picking him up from the head. And it was just, like... It was too long. It was too long, it, and the cuts didn't make sense. It, it Another time-wasting moment that was also, like weirdly sexual like i don't know i felt like why were they covered in oil and why did it take like try and pick them up twice and go fuck it dude we gotta we'll get to this later what was going on just this movie wastes so much time over nothing and the moments where we need context and information it just is like oh yeah and now the monster's here Wait, I mean, what? if we're talking things that are slightly sexual, can we talk about when Kenneth Branagh is like, all right, we got to do this now because cholera is coming. And he just runs through with a fucking robe and his abs out. You can tell he did like at least six sit-ups for this movie. Dude, I think scene. he just put those little abs. He to run around without his shirt on. Oh, yeah. He was like, look, man, I've been doing crunches for the past like seven months for this movie we're doing the shirtless scene and then everyone's like you're the director if you want to do the shirtless scene no one's stopping you dude live <laughs> live live <laughs> it was my father <laughs> I think this movie was great the <laughs> No, this movie was not great. It was the thing is, is it wasn't like it wasn't so bad. I wanted to rip my fucking hair out. It wasn't Girl on the Third Floor, but um, it wasn't very good. Like I texted you guys that, and then I meant it. Like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't very good. You can tell it's competently made. There's people aware of how filming movies works, and you know know how to make a story but it just feels like they didn't understand 
the things either. I I don't I don't know. Like, I mean, just just like, just like Doctor Frankenstein says, this movie need not happen. Yeah, it, it didn't need to happen. There's other versions of it that exist. This didn't tell a new story. It didn't do it in a way that you know made me want to not watch the fucking Boris Karloff version. It just was. You, you know what could have cut out a good solid fifteen minutes was him challenging the uh, educated people of the day who were telling him he was wasting his time. Oh, that didn't need to happen at all. Yeah. Where he goes and he's talking down to some guy who's just calling him a quack. And it, I think that was to kind of build his character as like a legitimate, I don't know, intellectual. He's brilliant and troubled, sir. But he's going to go on to basically do necromancy. We don't need him to have this ordeal where he's getting into arguments with actual teachers. It was odd. Because he just, he doesn't do anything with it except for, like, somebody else animates a monkey hand. But, if anything, that makes his character worse, because he didn't do this all by himself. I, I don't know, it was weird, and if they cut it out, it would have made the movie not two hours long, and more enjoyable. I just I, I, this movie wastes so much time. I'm gonna I'm gonna bitch about that for the rest of my life if this ever gets brought up again. How much time this movie wastes, telling me things that don't matter, and then <laughs> not telling me the things that do matter. Like the when the like the fucking family that the monsters staying with, when their landlord comes and he's just like, "You didn't pay your rent." <laughs> That he just comes to kick ass. Yeah, he just comes and starts. Like they could have had a like a moment where they're trying to fucking pick the potatoes, and this dude shows up and he's like, "You're late on the rent, but I'll give you a break this time." But next time, you know, just okay. This character is now established. Instead, it's just a dude that's yelling that also disappears because the monster. I'm pretty sure killed the fucking dude by putting his head through the roof. A dunk. And then he's gone. Like, the family comes back and they don't see a body laying on the ground outside the house. They're just like, oh, I'm... Grandpa's sitting by the fire with someone, so he must be in trouble. Like, wait, what? I'm trying to... So I'm trying to fix all of that with my edit of this movie. It's going to be a little different. You guys ready? <laughs> Go for it. All right, so I'm trying to ha keep the top part of the movie how it is. I think it's stellar, perfect... We go to the scene where the monster is getting chased out of town by all the people. He's the one who gives us the cholera. Get him. <coughs> no. <laughs> and they just chase him out of town, right? And they chase him out of town into the forest. And then it's like him running through the forest. And then it cuts. It cuts to the scene of Dr. Loomis driving up to the insane asylum. And like, you don't understand. There's pure evil here. And then the car drives off. And you see somebody grab a mask from the Halloween store. Okay. And it explains why Michael doesn't die. It's the boogeyman. So here's my my perfect day of the movie, all right? So we go we keep the scene where they're in like An Antarctica or fucking the North Pole or wherever they're visiting Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Right? And it gets to where they see, you know, uh, Victor running through the fucking mist and like, oh, something's out there. And they get on the ship and then... We keep the end where Victor finishes and says, that's my story and dies. And then credits roll. So it's about Dude, five whole minutes. I'd watch that version. <laughs> he was my father. Yeah, it just, the, the monster cries and there's no middle part. It just, just give me I the... am done with men. <laughs> yeah, I think they should have just yeah, looped yeah. him destroying dogs for 30 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, You're the yeah. fucking dog killer, Keeper. You always say I'm the one that kills dogs for fun. That's you. It was just, I was so odd and out of place. I, th mm -hmm. I, I think that my biggest gripe with this movie is just pacing. Yeah. Like, it was weird where, I don't know, I said it already, but just if there was a little bit more between the time where we're supposed to believe he's like a sympathetic farmhand who has like a potentially good heart to child strangler. I don't know. It would have felt less weird. Dude, he gets down to killing that kid fast. Just all of a sudden, he's like, 
oh, you dead. <laughs> like, wait, what? Uh, it was, uh, there were a lot of issues I had with it, but... I mean, the big problem is, like, the scenes that you don't give a shit about take forever. Mm-hmm. And the scenes that you do give a shit about, like, the one where he's, like, the one where they're going to turn that blonde bitch into a zombie is like, hey, I need you to make me a girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. And then he's just like, if you don't do it, I'm going to show when you get married. And then it just cuts. It's like, and- show us more of the monster and Frankenstein being mad. The whole dynamic of Frankenstein is like, uh, you know, man versus creator, God, man plays God. Yeah. creature. You know, it's that, it's that whole dynamic. It's like, don't fuck around some shit you're not supposed to. Yeah, and that's on that same note, um, don't spend three full minutes explaining the incestual element and the the marriage proposal, and then have Frankenstein rip Elizabeth's heart out and light her face on fire in ten seconds and jump out the window. Like, yeah, that, that I keep my promises, that. and he just goes. Pew. And dude, he runs away like he's in fifty pounds of prosthetics too. <laughs> it was just awkward. Yeah, uh, like the parts you wanted to see were abrupt and just done really quickly, and the rest of it was very drawn out. Yeah, I uh, the the scene where he comes through the fucking the like skylight in their hotel room. <laughs> that part cracks me up too, because like he hears he, he earlier the monster mentions, "Did you know how I knew how to play this?" and holds up a like a recorder. <laughs> and, and, and this scene, all of a sudden they hear the recorder, and it sounds like it's like two feet away. So it's like the closest thing ever. And Victor's like, "Lock the door. He's around somewhere." It's like he's like next to you somewhere. Why are you wandering around this fucking? Lodge in the middle of the woods in a thunderstorm when you heard. He also it. had two guns. Yeah. He had two guns and he took them with them instead of leaving one with Elizabeth. Yeah. It's like <laughs> okay, here's one, or it, it's just nothing. Like, oh my god, it, what a yeah. Why would Frankenstein thing. mess with them like that and play the flute before he's gonna attack? <laughs> like, you know, I know how to play that. Like, <laughs> then we just hear it later her through the door and ripped her head off and been like, "Fuck you, Victor." And that would have been perfect. <laughs> and the other thing, too, is like, Victor could have saved himself from trouble and been like, listen, guys, I made this fucking zombie, all right? And I got to go make him another zombie girl. He'll leave us all alone. The whole thing, I, I, I guess this is actually what the story's supposed to be, is the whole thing is everything's the dude's fault. When yeah. he could have, like, when he could have, like, listened to everybody and left town, not rose a thing from the dead. Maybe instead of just going to bed when you make an abomination, shoot it in the head. Uh, he, instead of just leaving it hanging and seeing yeah, if it he, comes down to get you. He writes in his journal, it's dead. That's it. it. He just leaves it hanging in the rafters and then gets attacked by it later. Yeah, he's just like, I better go to bed. Yeah, he's not a nap time, <laughs> huh? This, this journal and its contents need to be destroyed. Mm-hmm. I'll do it later. Yeah, it's just later. <laughs> He's Why bother writing that head. down? He's Throw that a, shit away. He's got an open fire right there. <laughs> oh, also, it just I just remembered uh the lady who the crowd blamed for the death of the kid. They they rushed her up to the gallows in like five seconds and threw her off. <laughs> her. I mean, that was shocking because <laughs> I mean, the sound effect for one, but also, again, the pace where it was just like the crowd points at her and says, it's her. She killed the kid. And then two seconds seconds later, later, they have her up in a tower with a rope around her neck and drop kick her off the tower. (laughs) Hold on, bye. (laughs) It's just like, talk about like (laughs) raw materials. Your no, words. no trial, no nothing. Just hang her now and just bye. Bye. She's the one that gave us color. Right. <laughs> it was insane. <clears throat> it was it's fucking what a weird, strange movie. That like I said, it was two hours and felt like nine. I I don't know. Do you guys think we should get to our recommendation of this? 
I think it's apparent, but I, sure. I mean, I, I, if it's not apparent, I wouldn't recommend this movie. Like, I, you know, I, I said to... earlier, it wasn't bad. It wasn't so bad. I never want to see, like, okay, no, never mind. I never want to see it again. But it was, like, clearly competently made. But either they just lost the plot while they were making it or in the editing room or something. It's it's not worth ever seeing again. If someone asks me about it, I'm hopefully going to black this out. So I would not say watch it. I'd maybe a 4 or 3 out of 10 for me. Yeah, I couldn't say that I'd recommend it myself either. Um, it, it just... I didn't enjoy myself watching it. I found myself wanting it to be over. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's not a feeling you want when you dedicate time to a movie. So I didn't I didn't even feel that way about Girl on the Third Floor. I at least had some fun parts of that movie or gross parts. And this movie, I just I didn't want to watch it almost the whole time. <laughs> And it's, yeah, it was it, like walking through a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the faces. It's a three <laughs> for me. Three out of ten. Okay. Because it wasn't the worst thing ever. It it was a movie. Yeah. But, but I don't want to watch it anymore. Ever. If you guys are serious at all about film or art... <laughs> You need to view this film. I wish I could take your brain out and replace it with anyone else's. <laughs> Dude, I got a fucking smooth brain, wrinkle free, baby. <laughs> I got a perfectly round brain. <laughs> uh, but honestly, uh, this movie didn't hold up as good as 16 year old Caleb liked it. Uh, I still didn't think it was terrible because it was kind of. I think it falls into like fun enough to watch because it's kind of bad, especially because I do think there were some parts that were worth it. Like I think the way the Frankenstein monster looks is pretty cool. And I do feel bad for him when he's like gardening and stuff. I just think that (laughs) the few good parts were outweighed by the poor pacing, terrible tone. And the fact that they didn't really even, do service to the message of Frankenstein by putting enough scenes of the two of them together. So I would say, I would say that I wouldn't recommend it, but you should watch it. Hmm. Five out of 10. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's the last thing we do in the podcast. So um, that's going to wrap it up for us, guys. Um, I enjoyed suggesting this movie to my friends. Uh, I'm glad we watched it and I got to remember a movie from when I was in high school. But um, I think we have a movie for next week. It's going to be suggested by our own Kiffer. Oh, yeah. Um, I want us all to watch the 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's a good one. I know it's not October anymore. But I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying these spooky movies. I've got some gaps in my horror film knowledge bank that I'm trying to fill in. Hell yeah. I like that choice. I'm going to try to keep this shit going just saying. So you know, I'm going to pick spooky ass movies like this <laughs> Frankenstein spooky. But um, <laughs> awesome. So yeah, thank you guys all. If you stuck with us this long and listen to the podcast. Um, we have a bunch of other podcasts we've been doing. You can check our channel and see those. If you thought we were funny or at least not terribly annoying, feel free to subscribe or tell anyone else about it that you think would like it. Thank you guys. Yeah. Make sure to add, uh, our socials too: Facebook, monkey scrolls, Twitter, yeah, monkey yeah. scroll. Get um, it. and you know, make sure if you do like this, like it, uh, again, you know, like he said earlier, subscribe and, uh leave us some comments if you listen i read uh the few that we get right now and yeah uh, you know what? go watch frankenstein and leave us some comments right now <laughs> and if you pause don't... this pause this and come back <laughs> yeah pause it right watch. at the end the last five minutes make sure yeah the last go 30 watch seconds actually uh, now. and uh you know also 
if you like what we're doing, like I said, comment. Or if you have any movie suggestions, you know, comment. We, you know, like I said, I read them all, so maybe we'll uh, start doing some from our comment section if we get them. Uh, yeah. yeah, I like that idea a lot. Well, uh, what's that? Adios? Oh, yeah. Adios. Good night.